everyone uh, again for joining us. This is week six um, of our education series part one on meta-analysis. Um, we've done a bit of theory so far. We've also done some practicalities of, of R and today we're gonna continue a bit of that um, and also revisit risk of bias um, a little bit. So once again, if you have a laptop with you, that would be quite useful. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the session. So thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Alexandrina. Um, and thank you, Niraj, uh, for organizing all of this. Uh, let me, now today, actually, I wanted to start with showing you guys a, a paper because I think a lot of you had been asking about data entry and other stuff. So I actually wanted to show you a paper that we've developed uh, with these uh, techniques uh, recently. And this is a paper on um, uh, adrenal denervation. Um, I think I mentioned this before as well. One second, let me just change the screen I share. New share. Screen two, and let me put it on this screen. So I think people who have questions can ask them. So, so this is a paper we did on uh, renal denervation. And I just wanted to show you a bit about it. As you can see, there's lots and lots of comments that my colleagues Jonathan has done. And this is what happens when you, when you end up writing these papers. But in essence, this was an update of a previous meta-analysis. And uh, the abstract basically says that, you know, we searched Ovid Medline. Uh, this has to be corrected. This actually should be uh, Medline Embase uh, through Ovid. Um, but anyway, so basically the seven studies, 772 patients. And then we talked about uh, AF recurrence, uh, which is in essence uh, the, the main point of the paper. Yeah. And then there's a bit of introduction. The introduction usually in these papers is is this um, this is actually an earlier version. I've actually corrected a lot of this, but in essence, the introduction usually is three paragraphs, three to four paragraphs. One is about the condition, one is about the intervention, one is about previous meta-analysis, etc. Uh, and then uh, there's a method section. This is about the search, the inclusion criteria, the exclusion criteria, and then there's a Prisma flowchart. The Prisma flowchart shows basically, oh, these were the, you know, what we found, and we removed the duplicates, which, you know, Ovid Metline does for you automatically, if you click on that function, and then these are the number of records, and then we had full text, and this is the number. So the, the Prisma flow diagram is, if you search on Google, you can download the uh, Word document, and just add things in there. And then uh, next thing is quality risk of bias. Now, risk of bias is just a way of measuring papers, and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. And then uh, these are all parts of the method section, how we did with the data extraction, how the data analysis was done, and this is the man too. What, what, what um, you know, uh, tests were uh, for heterogeneity were used. In this case, if you're gonna use R, you probably need to give uh, the function that you used in R. And uh, let's say you did uh, Paul Mandel for uh, the heterogeneity using mantle Heisel for the actual analysis, if you use Paul Mandel for heterogeneity, et cetera, you would give that here. And then um, obviously your results and the results go into a table like this. And this, there are a number of tables, but the main the first one is about each of the papers. In this case, how many patients were in each uh, paper, um, the inclusion exclusion criteria, the age, the uh, demographics, et cetera. Now this is interesting with demographics, there's no, no uh, fixed rule, but in essence, you probably want to display data that is in every paper or in most of the papers. Otherwise, you know, you end up with these empty <laughs> tables, which you don't want. And this is obviously the uh, forest plus. Now he's got one on AF recurrence, one on blood pressure, uh, one on uh, RDN on systolic blood pressure, yeah? and one on diastolic blood pressure. Is he got systolic and diastolic or uh, And then he uh, did a sensitivity analysis. He, he didn't need to give that. We actually have asked him to take out the sensitivity analysis, which means sensitivity analysis, when you take a few papers out and see how that works out. Diastolic blood pressure, EGFR, this is a new thing that he did. He found that, you know, if you do renal denervation, uh, sorry, if you do renal denervation and air fibrillation, you're actually, your kidney function improves as well. 
Um, and then the complications, which is actually very important. How many complications were there? And the complication rate, yeah? And it's actually, you get less complications if you do both procedures, which is quite bizarre, but you know, it's touching the line, so it's not as useful. And then this is the risk of bias, which is displays like this. Now, now I've gone through this uh, quite quickly, and this is a funnel plot, which he, he didn't need to do, but a funnel plot is, is, is basically looks at publication bias, but we're not gonna do that in too much detail here. We'll do that another day, okay. So I've gone through this paper quite quickly to make people understand how the final paper works. And now I'll start with asking you guys what you understood so far. Laura, what did you think so far? Uh, hi, Ed. I think something important I took was that you have uh, many different uh, factors that you're doing the meta-analysis for, but it is really insightful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Like, the, cause you, you had the blood pressure, the systolic, and also GFR, like different um, outcomes and so that's yeah. something interesting so so guess how long it took this guy to write this paper maybe a few weeks yeah it took him a month that's <laughs> yeah one month it's quite pretty good isn't it for one month of work in the man uh this is obviously uh, i gave him some other medical students they did the uh, screening and some did he did the risk of bias himself i think um and obviously he took some data from the older paper but uh, which he double checked. But can you see, it actually didn't take that long. And uh, he got a really, really nice looking paper, which we're going to submit soon, but we've asked him to make 5 billion changes. So it's, it's going to take a bit of time. Uh, Salongo, Fongian, Durani, what do you guys think so far? Mm -hmm. Lama, Odette, Harjit. What do you guys think? Really interesting, yeah. and it's good to see it all quantified. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, Sarah, Anshika, Hamza, Zaina, what do you guys think? So far about this paper. So, this was produced through this reverse meta analysis method I talked about. And uh, so he did the forest plots first and then reconstructed the rest of the paper around it, yeah? So he did the forest plots first and then the demographic data he did after. So he, he's, and th this, um, I basically I gave him some people to help him with this. And then he did the risk of bias afterwards, yeah? But overall, this is noticeable that it's actually quite a small uh, meta-analysis and this is important to understand. A small meta-analysis is not a bad meta-analysis, yeah? Uh, Rami, Anissa, Sivaranjani, Madi, what do you guys think? I think people are, are, are waking up now. Anissa? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what do you guys what do you think of the paper? It's very good. Very good method. Okay, so uh, Basil, Anne, Jobran, Bhavan, what do you guys think? Any questions on this? Now, if you look at this risk of bias, yeah, oh. then what you've got is there are two which are about the randomization process, the first two, which is the, whether the sequence generation was, when the risk of bias random sequence generation was done randomly in the sense that was it uh, through a computer, for example, yeah? Uh, otherwise, in the past, there was no random sequence generation in older papers. And then allocation concealment means that was, let's say if you had a placebo and a drug, uh, were they hidden? Yeah, was it hidden? Was it what they what the, the the labels on the boxes? Yeah, so the pharmacist is supposed to create these boxes which are of drugs which are unlabeled. Yeah, so you don't know. So randomization, location concealment. These are both actually about the randomization process in reality. Then the next one in risk of bias is blinding of participants. Oh, does uh, you know are the participants? Uh, and the personnel, are they blinded? And then the people who collect the data, blinding of outcomes, so are they blinded, yeah? So this, and to me, risk of bias can be div divided into three parts. The first one is the randomization process, which is the random sequence generation, the location consumer. The second part is whether the participants and personnel are blinded or there's blinding of outcome assessment. And the last bit is about the data itself, is that was there incomplete outcome data? Attrition bias. Attrition bias, interesting enough, or oddly enough, happens more in the patients who uh, people somehow sense or know that they're in the placebo group. So you notice there's a lot of attrition in the placebo group. 
uh, especially with procedures. Yeah? If you're a procedure, obviously, there's, you can never hide it. So there's a lot of attrition bias. And because people think I'm wasting my time in the placebo group or I'm in mean, the group that didn't get an intervention. And then selective reporting means that sometimes they run out of money and all the outcomes aren't reported. Yeah. And you can see that the main thing in this, in the renal denervation, was that there was no blinding possible because you're doing renal denervation, air fibrillation, and this is unblindable. It is not blindable. Yeah. Yeah. In Kuchi uh, 2017, there was no um, data for some reason. This is empty. Um, so yeah, can you see these, these, these four? But the others were the, the 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 outcomes were pretty good. The others, the outcome were pretty good. Allocation concealed was not done properly in some of the papers, but otherwise it was all right. Yeah. Okay. Let's pick on some other people. Uh, Anne Jobran, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Anne Jobran, Bhavan, Bunayat. What do you think so far? No. Muhammad, Celestin, Lawrence, Fate. Yeah, I find like the paper is well structured, but then there are a lot of uh, comments. So even though he took one week to write it, uh, how, how, <laughs> how much time is it going to take for a final so to done? Yeah, it takes time. But let, let's put it another way. So, the, so my calculation usually is 20 to 30 hours. Um, probably, I would say, yeah, 20, 30 hours first draft. Then probably there are a few people who are doing different tasks, four to eight hours each, and then probably another 10 hours to get you to the final draft. So I think um, you're talking about 30 to 40 hours for the first author. Yeah, maybe closer okay. to 40, 40. Yeah, so this is something you need to keep in mind. So you need to, and it's best to do this over a period of time, such as six weeks to two months. Sola, Tejas, Najib, Kiara, what do you guys think? Clement, Kristel, Somurchuku, Bharat, Halima, what do you guys think? Mahmoud, Nicole, Dalida, Amy. I will say anything because I started this. Maybe the publication is okay, but not too much. Yeah, it's not it too much. Fine. Oh, it looks fine. Yeah, it requires a bit of work, but that's the whole point. They, they're still, for the most part, complete. Um, Turkmana, Mahnur, Wehan, Zaina. No. Hel Hel Helena, Abdurrahman, Felipe, Naguare. Any questions? Oh, good, doctor. Very good. All right. No, now. Just, just, uh, sorry, I, I just arrived, so I don't really know. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so get me go to my presentation on. Uh, so you guys can see my screen, yeah? Let me just double check if they can see my... Neeraj, you guys can see my PowerPoint, yeah? Yes, we can. Okay, risk of bias. Risk of bias, what is risk of bias? Risk of bias is like a uh, quality assessment. Yeah, It's basically, uh, in meta-analysis, we talked about the different ways you can measure. So forest plot is, is, is a great way of bringing together uh, all these uh, different papers and then using a... Um, of a uh, method of analysis, um, such as we talked about mantle Heisel, and then another method to create uh, look at heterogeneity, you create a forest plot, and that brings all the data together, which is brilliant. But then, then obviously, the delves in the details, and uh, you need uh, something called a risk of bias. And risk of bias is uh, looks at each individual paper, and through the stuff that we talked about. Um, the stuff we talked about let me just go up, show you the uh, uh it basically uh tells you what the quality of each paper is and this red represents a high risk of bias yeah this is an example of a uh, red man um, output yeah so you can use a package called Robis. And Robis is very good. Now, Robis, I'll go through in the end, but Robis is also available online as an app. And that you can use, but we're going to talk about Robis um, using um, uh, Robis uh, using um, R. And if you have installed the DMetar package, you should be able to load, load up the Robis package. Um, and do you guys, any of you guys want to do that? Library Robis? Yeah, let's start that first. Let's torture you guys. 
let's start from the top again. Laura, Lama, Odette, Harjit, and Chika. Can you load Sorry, up what's it? the question? Yeah. Yes, what was the question? If you guys can load up Posit and then load up Robvis, then we'll go through it. Library Robvis, yeah? Yes, what was the question? Oh, no, the, no, the, the question is no. So uh, what I'm saying is that if you guys can load up Posit, basically you just go to the website and go into Posit as we discussed before. And if anybody hasn't done it before, they can just um, let me know in the chat and then uh, we can go through it. Uh, but in essence, you need to load up Posit. And then we will talk about uh, how to create a risk of bias plot within R, which is, so Robbis is also available as a uh, web app, but um, we're, we're gonna do this in R just to make your life more difficult. <laughs> yeah? So what you do is you can load up this app, but then how do you import this uh, risk of bias data? So the first, column is study, yeah? And this uh, has a study name. Uh, the second to last column is overall, yeah? And then uh, the last um, column is weight. And this is, uh, you you can, uh, so the weight is basically comes from the forest plot. Sorry, the weight comes from the forest plot itself, yeah? And the forest plot, obviously, it calculates a weight. So whatever you use, whether it's mantle high or something else, it will have a weighting, and you can put that weighting in there. And then uh, all the other are, are the domains. So D1 and D2, for example, were the um, randomization allocation concealment. D3, D4 were the blinding of the um, patients and the people who were doing the procedure. And D4 was the um, blinding of the uh, uh, outcome assessors and D5, this for some reason doesn't have D6. Um, D5, oh, this is risk of bias too, that's why. Yeah, risk of bias, so um, this one is risk of bias too. Um, and uh, risk of bias two is, is a more advanced version of risk of bias one, yeah? But we'll go, I'll go through in the differences in a minute a little bit. So there are four templates within our obvious. And these are all different tools. Risk of bias is the original one, and the risk of bias is for uh, randomized control trials, and the risk of bias two is also for randomized control trials. Quadas is for tests. Robbins is for non-randomized control trials, such as observational data. So you can use Robbins, but some people also use new cross auto scan. Yeah. Now let's ask uh, any uh, any questions so far, guys. Let me just pick on people from the bottom now. Giva, Visha, Hadi, Ali, any questions so far? No, oh, some people in the chat. Let's see what's in the chat. Uh, is it possible Excel spreadsheet beforehand? I was here a week before, but I forgot the website for the meta-analysis. Uh, you can, yeah, you can go to this uh, book. I think this is, is this last week's chat? Niraj. The chat, is it last week's? No, no, I think this is from now. This from now? Yeah. Uh, so I think the meta, yeah, that, that, that uh, website book is correct. Um, and yeah, that's fine. Um, let's just go back to this. So I think, so it's important to understand that there's risk of bias, the different tools depend on what you're doing. So if you are a lot of risk of bias one, to be honest, for most studies, if you just use randomized control trials, it's fine. Quartus is only for tests. And Robbins one or Newcastle are uh, all for um, uh, for observational data. So basically, the, it's not randomized at all. Yeah. Um, so what you can do is let me just show you a risk of bias um, judgment. So for example, random sequence generation. Let's say so we can say uh, unclear, low risk, high risks. Yeah. So for example, then we can give a quote. Yeah. So you can say random sequence generation. Yes, so quote is sent, subjects were randomized in blocks of six to one of the two treatment groups using sequentially numbered sealed opaque envelopes. So the random sequence generation is not a quote. How are the sequence generated? So it's unclear. Allocation concealment. So allocation process, they said was 
adequate. So it's clear that it wasn't, um, uh, nobody knew which uh, groups they were going into. Then blinding, high risk, which patient wasn't blinding because they knew which sort of dressing, yeah? So it's about foam dressing, which sort of dressing they were getting. Blinding outcome assessment, again, they were not blinded, the people collecting the data. Incomplete outcome data, high risk. And then this was, there were a lot of people withdrawing from one group, yeah? High risk, selective reporting. Um, then the, the what, what they're saying is the primary outcomes which are in the protocol, are they all reported, yeah? So this is risk of bias one. This is what risk of bias tool uh, two, uh, tool looks like. And this has is slightly different. It has randomization, deviation from intended intervention, missing outcome data, measurement of the outcome, selection of the reported result. Now, what you can do for all of these, is you can find these easy spreadsheets that you can fill out the data and they're actually not that difficult to do. For, for the most people uh, to learn risk of bias one or risk of bias two will only literally take a few minutes, yeah? And this is what QUADAS looks like. QUADAS is the, the test. And this, QUADAS is actually the easiest of all the tools to use, yeah? So it's got, talks about patient selection, what the index test was, the first test, because there's two tests usually, yeah? So uh, index test, then there is the uh, reference standard, what you're measuring against, um, the, was there a time difference between the two tests? Usually is one test compared to another test. So this index test is the first test and the flow and timing is there, is there a long gap between the first and the second test? Yeah, so that's a risk of bias. And then um, you can, oh, there's also things like applicability stand concerns, which again, you look at patient selection index test and uh, reference standard. But the important thing to understand with quotas is that Quartus is actually extremely easy to use. It's a nice PDF. If you search Quartus to the, you will find. Yeah. And it's never, it's not a difficult uh, one to use. Newcastle Ottawa is probably even easier. Newcastle Ottawa, you give these stars, which is, um, is so Newcastle Ottawa means observational data sets. And in this is, oh, is there a representative cohort? So we we picked this patient, but they were all from a tertiary care center. So that's not a really representative cohort, is it? So, the exposed and non-exposed, because usually you're comparing two groups. So let's say amyloid, yeah? So I'm saying that, uh, let's say they were, these patients were re referred to National Amyloid Center and I, co I compared them to uh, a group of patients which uh, are also in the, um, uh, I, I compared to a group of patients which were not referred to National Amyloid Center. So they become really, really different, for example. Uh, ascertainment of exposure, did they all get the exposure? So this could be a drug, this could be something else. Then comparability on the cohorts, are they comparable cohorts? Yeah, in the case example I gave you, they're not. Um, is the assessment, is the outcome assessed completely? Were they followed up for a uh, period of time and then you give a total score. So this is Newcastle Auto, which I really like as well. It's very easy to use on observational studies. So just to go through this again, risk of bias one um, is the older one, you can use this. Uh, for uh, randomized controlled trials, risk of bias two, you can again use for randomized controlled trials, but you have to do for each outcome separately. This is why risk of bias two is actually diff much more difficult to use than risk of bias one. Quartus for tests, and uh, Newcastle Ottawa scale is uh, for non-randomized uh, trial studies. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna stop here for a second and see if there, hi, it says there's no, Package called Robes, that's because you haven't installed DMATAR. So you go to, yeah, Posit Cloud. Yeah, you go to Posit Cloud, and the Robes package is actually a, 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 a part of a DMATAR, yeah? So you should be able to upload it. If you go to uh, DMATAR, let me show you. Yeah, you have to install the DMATAR package. And the DMATAR package is in the first, uh, is in, sorry, in the second chapter of the book meta-analysis with R. Yeah, and inside is the Robus package. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, let's see, because they, I've covered quite a bit of stuff in one go. So let me just ask everybody. Solongo, Fonyan, Nurane, Laura, any questions so far? No, so far, so good. It's, it's quite complicated, but uh, I think once you uh, look into this. Uh, no go... question. I... Yeah, no questions. Okay. Odette, Harjeet, uh, Anshika, Hamza, any questions? There is... 
No, everything good. No, everything is good. Okay. So, Hamza, Rami, Anissa, Maddie. Any questions so far? No questions. Oh, Maddie, I think you're joining for the first time. So, Maddie, this is a <laughs> throw in at the deep end. Basically, uh, you need to find this book, uh, Meta Analysis with R, uh, on the internet. They, they, have, they, they put in the link. And then you need to uh, load up, uh, log into, uh, basically, create account for something called Posit R. And that will allow you to create a, uh, an account. And in that, you have to go to that book, Meta Analysis with R. And in the second chapter, it tells you all these packages to install. And once you've installed them, you should be able to follow what we're doing a bit more. And there, the previous uh, lectures are on YouTube, because this is the sixth one. Uh, Basil, Jobran, Pavan, Boyanat, have you guys any questions so far? No. Muhammad, Celestine, Faith, Sola, Kiara? No? I'm good. Okay. Let me go over this again. Risk of bias one. Risk of bias one has six sections. Uh, these uh, sections are two are on randomization. Random sequence generation. Were they randomized properly? Two is allocation concealment. Was the randomization hidden? Uh, then the other one, the second bit is blinding. Were the participants and personnel blinded? Yeah. Were was the outcome assessment, which is the observer, were they um, blinded? Then did lots of people leave the study, attrition bias? Were all the data collected or not? Did they bother? Did they not bother? Yeah. All of these create bias at different levels. So the, the, the randomization always creates bias because the doctor could say, well, you know, I think this patient deserves the treatment more than this guy. Oh, no, I shouldn't put this guy in this trial. This trial is risky. I shouldn't put it in. So you can, people used to manipulate this. And they used to put in patients into different C, and that obviously messes with the data. The blinding affects you quite a bit. You think, well, you know, this treatment should work, and then you end up seeing things. You and the patient start saying, seeing things that are not there. Yeah. So it, it both points this can happen, whether it's the participant, the personnel are not blinded, or whether the outcome assessment are blinded. This can create issues. And then the outcome attrition bias is quite easy because if there's lots of attrition within one group. That is quite dangerous because that could mean all the healthy people are leaving, and therefore what is happening is that the the, the group which is the placebo um, is 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 looking worse. Yeah, for example, or selective reporting is again same thing. You don't have all the outcomes, so how can you even measure the data? This is why risk of bias is important, and risk of bias too is the more modern version, but a bit more difficult to use. It generates reams and reams of data because each outcome is uh, measured separately. But again, for this, you can also get a spreadsheet. And lots of people have created these Excel spreadsheets on the internet, or you can use Robvis, which we talked about. And Quadras, we talked about, which is for testing, but it's very, very easy to use. And it's about patient selection, index test, a reference standard, what you're measuring against. So it's basically you compare two tests. Yeah. And then the flow and the timing where the tests separated by too much time, for example, the two tests from each other, for example. And Newcastle Ottawa is the one easy test to use. Again, you can find a spreadsheet to do this, but is it, oh, was it representative? Uh, uh, in the sense that it's representative the actual population that we're trying to look at. And uh, is, 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 uh, was the selection um, done well? Were they all exposed? Are they comparable, the two groups? Is the outcome uh, assessment uh, done properly um, and there's good follow up or not? Yeah, so Newcastle, Ottawa. And you can see they all get stars, and the maximum number of stars that you can get is seven. Yeah, but it's very, very good. So within Robvis, there are lots of templates. It's got ROB1, ROB2, Robbins1, and Quadras. It also has a generic template called ROB1, but you can change this generous template in any way you want. This is the advantage of using the ROB11. The others, you cannot modify. There's the RobBase has lots of example uh, data sets. Yeah? So if you can get install RobBase with DMATAR, then you can get hold of these example data sets, which is for ROB2, Robbins, Quarter, ROB1. So for example, if you guys want to use this function glimpse, you can look into the Robbins data which should look like this, okay? 
Yeah. Does anybody want to do that? Let's see if how far people have managed to follow this. Uh, let's talk to somebody. Hadi, Ali, Musa, Noor. Have you guys been following this so far? Yes. Felipe, Abdurrahman, Helena, Wehan, Amy. Yeah, I managed to get it, yeah. You managed to get it. Very good. Uh, Nicole, Mahmoud, Halima, have you guys managed to get the data? Look at the data at least. Yeah. So this is what it should look um, like. I'm still kind of having trouble with the Robbis part. Sorry. The Robbis. Uh, you need to install DMetar. Actually, let, let me just show you, and this will be useful for uh, Maddie as well, because otherwise it's a bit too much. So uh, share screen. And then uh, let me just show. So I think, Maddie, if you go to uh, this book, Meta Analysis in R, and then you go to, obviously, first of all, you need to create a POSIT account. Um, and so POSIT R, and then yeah. you, within POSIT R, you then create a new R project. Yeah? And then you install these packages. So some, if it doesn't work, you have to install all of these packages, which are in 2.2 of this book, Meta SR. So you install Tidyverse, Meta, Meta 4. And then you go down, and then you install these packages, so Dev Tools, and then install GitHub. And this will install DMeta. So there are five lines of code to run. Yeah. These, so these, um, the first, where are they? Uh, these ones. And then... Uh, where did it go? I've skipped it. Here, these ones. And then once you've got them, then you DMeta should be there, and then you should be able to run the code that I told you. Yeah? Any questions, guys? If any issues, then post in the chat. Um, sorry. Uh, where do you get the uh, the data? The data? Ah, yes. Right. So the data is in the RobVis package. So if you want, if you've done library RobVis, then do glimpse, and then you should be able to see the data. This is uh, basically, I've taken this directly from the chapter. You can go to the chapter actually to make your own life easier, which is chapter number 15, risk of bias. And then, because I'm mostly copying the exercise from here. Yeah? Okay. Let me go back to my uh, Zoom thing. Uh, where do I go? Okay, so glimpse, and then it will show you this data, yeah, which is already there. And then if you guys want, uh, you uh, can even uh, create a simple risk of bias plot by running this code. You're just running this code because we already have the ROB2 data. So if you just run this code, ROB underscore summary data, you can, you're better off cutting and pasting it from the chapter. And the, then the chapter was chapter number 15. Yeah, chapter number 15. And then you should be able to run this code and then create your first risk of bias plot. Yeah. Not if you want to type it, you can, but it's quite difficult. <laughs> All right. Let's ask the people who are here, has anybody managed to do create the risk of bias plot? Uh, Amy, Vishwa, Zaina, Christelle, any luck? Rania, Najib, Mahnoor, Rishpa, any luck so far? Yeah, all good, thank you. Very yeah, good. all good. Hadi, all Ali, good, Hadi, doctor. Musa, Naguare, Felipe. Abdurrahman, Helena, Vihan, Dilida. Yeah. Nicole, Mahmoud, Halima, Bar Barat, Somtu, Kuchu. Yes? May I do it? Sorry. Uh, what does it mean if it says uh, 
uh, object data robins are not found. You need to install the packages again. Okay. Yeah, it means you have to install the packages. So just to go through this again. So this is ROB summary. Uh, this has data and the tool, which is a risk of bias, so ROB2, Robins1, Quadras. Uh, then do you want to put an overall risk of bias? Yeah, the overall risk of bias or not. So, uh, and then weighted, uh, whether the weights, obviously we, as we discussed before, this should be in the spreadsheet, whether overall or weighted and a color screen. Yeah, so here is uh, another. So we did, this one was uh, ROB2 and you guys can do another one for Robins and you can do one for Cordas. So I want you guys to try these two. They're three years old. The data is already in there. So you should be able to do all of this. And if you run into issues, let me know. Um, so let's torture some people. Um, Hamza, Rami. Don't call me, please. Don't call me, please. Huh? Anissa. Um, Bunayat, Muhammad, Celestine. Yeah, I'm trying to run the second one. Okay. Faith, Sola, Kiara, Clement. Um, okay, thank you very much. I enjoyed everything, but I'm working from my phone because um, I'm on the road, so I'm not with okay, my no. uh, okay. machine. Okay, no. Thank you. Don't okay. Uh, Bharat, Halima, Mahmoud, Nicole. Uh, Dalida, Wehan, Helena. Uh, Abdurrahim, Felipe, Musa, Ali Khalil, Rishba. Any luck so far? Mahnoor, Najib, Rania, Christel, any luck? You guys managed to do it? Zaina, Vishwa, Giva. Yes, Aim. working fine for me. Blessing, okay, fine. Hadi, Basel, Anshika, yes? Yeah? Very good. So you can, if you want, um, change this and you can make... Um, so this is says it will replace display simply, but if you want, you can also do the overall risk of bias, and that is by just overall equal true. You can do that data and you can add this in, and that will give you an overall risk of bias. Yeah, the additional bar, the overall risk of bias. If so if some people want to run that, that would be useful. Um, and then uh, weighted or unweighted, I wouldn't worry about too much. But weighted is interesting. What does weighted mean? Weighted means that um, do you, uh, the, is the proportion of information rather than the proportion of studies. Yeah. So that's quite interesting because it becomes a bit more like a forest plot where the where the data is determined not by the number of papers, but by the by the uh, how much the data is contributing toward the final thing. So it says some papers are more important than other papers. But it's not something you need to know in great level of detail. But you can, if you want, and create an overall risk of bias, which is nice. And you can also create it a, a weighted plot, yeah, or uh, which a weighted is. Uh, so generally, the weighting is 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 weighted, uh, but you can do weighted is false and remove it. Okay, uh, and you can also change the color to something color blind person can see, <laughs> and then you can put in your own colors. Yeah, so there's lots of lots of different options. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll ask you guys to do this one. The overall is true, true. And, that, and that and that would be That's nice. Not idea. That's an idea. Sorry, I didn't understand what you're saying. Good. Mm. Solongo, Fuyang, uh, Nurane, Harjit, have you guys managed to do this? Hamza, Rami, Anissa? Jobran, Muhammad, Celestine, Faith. All yep. good? Very good, very good. Okay, so I think you guys have done well so far. You can do overall if you want. You can um, do weighted, unweighted. Weighted is better, so just leave it. And then uh, you can do 
color blind, which basically means that color blind people can see. It's interesting, actually. And you can do but purple and pinky colors if you guys want, if that's what you want, how you want to display. Now, there's another type of for uh, risk of bias, too, which is quite nice, which is called an eye traffic light. And a traffic light is very good. So again, you can sort of use the same data and I want you to run this code and then you can basically get a traffic light risk of bias plot. Yeah, so traffic light risk of bias plot. Now I want you guys to run this code as well. This is on, uh, of the, this is again in chapter 15, yeah? Chapter 15, so you should be able to see it in chapter 15. Uh, let me see what is happening in the group. Uh, let's torture somebody. Anissa, have you been able to follow so far? Jobran, Punayat? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have? You've been, been able to do the code, yeah? Yeah. Faith, Sola, Kiara, Clement, Bharat, Halima. Yes? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm trying to get back to my machine, please. I will join soon, please. Okay, no, no, that's all right, sir. Nic Nicole, uh, Dalida, Wehan, Helena, have you guys been able to do so far? Abdurrahim, Felipe, Musa, Ali Khalil, any luck so far? Hadi, Basil, Anchika, Laura, Amy, Yeah, no? I managed to take no problem. Very good, very good. All right, fine. So traffic light, yeah? Traffic light. And the traffic light, again, has the data. And then uh, you can, um, the study, uh, then the second column is the, the first domain. The last one is a weight. Um, and then the risk of bias tool, which is risk of bias one, or risk of, or in this case, a risk of, uh, or risk of bias two or robins or quadras are currently supported. And the color scheme is color and P size. And the P size basically means that you can make the plot bigger or smaller, yeah? And that's important because if you have a lot of data, a lot of data, then you may, may need to reduce the, the size of it, yeah? So then, uh, so you can change the, um, uh, what's called, uh, let's go here, uh, color scheme again, you want to change colorblind. Uh, you can change it to purpley colors if you want and point size. Now point size, you can just change by the P size is eight, for example. So P size is usually about 20. And then that's because if you have lots of data, then you need to reduce Although This looks a bit too small. I can barely read this. But if you guys want to uh, run this, then um, it's not a problem. Yeah. And then the web app, yeah. So Robvis, Robvis is a web app. And to be honest, if you don't want to use R, then you can just use a uh, Robus. Uh, and Robus, you can even do a uh, user graphical user interface. You can um, store, uh, you can basically create a uh, traffic light. You can create um, an ordinary one, and then you can download the plots. So it's great. You know, Robus is, 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 is brilliant um, and, um, uh, you know, extremely useful. Niraj, have you used Robis? Niraj, any of you guys use Robis? I'll torture you with one last bit of code. Why don't we do this color bit? Make it nice colors. Um, all right, let's go through the group again. Uh, Solongo, Funyan, Nurane, Harjit, any questions so far? Can a package run on my local machine? Yes, it can. If you do R Studio, if you download R Studio, you can use it. The, the disadvantage of using POSIT is that you have to do a monthly payment if you use more than 25 hours. So, but you can use it in R um, Studio on a local machine. And some people whose internet is not great, I think that would probably be preferable. Because POSIT, is, is, if your internet connection is not good, doesn't work very well. Yeah, in all honesty. And uh, is, is sometimes if you go and do something else, it just sort of, Re, uh, it, it basically sort of erases itself. Sorry. Funyang, Nurane, Harjit, 
Hamza, Rami, Anissa. Any questions? No? Faith, Sola, Kiara, Clement. Clement, I'm, I'm trying no to um, install the on my local machine. So ah, okay. I'll, that's fine. No, no problem. Hal Halima, Mahmoud, Nicole, Dalida, we had. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Let, let me just unmute some people. I think I'm unmuted too many people. Okay. So, um, Helena, Felipe, Musa, Ali Khalil, an issue so far? No? Mahnoor, Najib, Hadi, Basil, and Shika. Are you all happy? Now, let me do one more thing. We've done a bit of risk of bias, uh, and I will uh, go back and go over it all again one more time. So it's very, very clear. So for risk of bias, uh, you the Cochrane uh, Handbook says that you can use a uh, summary bar plot, uh, and you can use a traffic light plot. Yeah, these are the two main types. Uh, if you pro problem is that it's very very difficult to uh, create these in PowerPoint. Yeah, uh, if you want to do this, uh, so you can create them in Revman, but it's a bit difficult. So it's much much easier to use Robis. Robis you can use in R, or you can use as a um, uh, online. Yeah, you can just search Robis. So that's the to dream at our library, Robis, and then you take your data from the study. So that is the study. Uh, and then each of the domains, and then the overall judgment, and then the weight. And then you can use it for Robins 1, Robins 2, uh, uh, which are basically for, for randomized control trials. Uh, 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 sorry, Roscoe Bias 1, Roscoe Bias 2, and then Robins, which is for observational data sets, and Quadas is for uh, tests. Yeah. You can uh, upload the data. Uh, as we talked before, and just going through risk of bias one, which is the most commonest one, the simplest to use in some ways. Um, and two of them are about ra uh, randomization. So random sequence, Jarish was the sequence done randomly through a computer. Then location was the randomization hidden. Then were the participants of us are blinded? And was the outcome blinded? And then were was there attrition? Lots of people, did they leave the trial? And then selected reporting were out the outcomes reported. So what risk of bias two looks like, which is, is also about randomization, deviation from the protocol, then missing outcome data, then measurement, was it done properly of the outcome, and selection of the uh, reported result. So it's somewhat similar to risk of bias one. And quarter is more about, was it for the test the patient, were they selected? Was the initial test, uh, uh, what about the initial test? What about the, re what the reference was is against and the flow and the timing between the two tests, yeah? Was there long? Time. And Newcastle Ottawa, which I've, I like better than Robbins, with observation starts, is it representative of the exposed cohort? Was it selected? Well, were they all exposed? Are they comparable, the two cohorts um, or the two, two groups? And uh, the assessment outcome, was it complete? And was the follow-up adequate? And we talked about that it has four templates, actually. One is ROB1, which is the flexible one, ROB2, Robbins1, and then Quadas, yeah? Quadas is for diagnostic studies, Robbins 1 is, uh, but I'll prefer Newcastle Ottawa, but you can use Robbins 1 if you want. And then in this, if you want to play around with the data, Robbins has, has, has all these data sets for ROB1, ROB2, Robbins and Quadas, and then you can look at the data, and then you can simply create this uh, summary plot, and you can modify it and change the color and have uh, overall, um, overall bar, you can have weight it, you can change the color, yeah? And you can do all these different plots. The red bit is bad, yeah? So this is overall, uh, overall is true. So there's an overall section as well, which is a below overall risk of bias. And then uh, you can weight it or unweighted. Weighting means it becomes more like a forest plot where each paper is weighed. And then you can change the color. This is colorblind, you can make it into very purpley. And then there's a traffic light, traffic light. So this, this function is called traffic underscore light. And for this one, ROB underscore summary, yeah? So they just, then you can modify it again, the same data, 
tool, what is it, ROB1, ROB2, quadras, color, uh, P size means that you can make it bigger or smaller. Yeah, and this, for example, you can simply display, uh, and then you can do color blind, you can do lots of colors, and then you can change the point size to make it smaller. And then you can use the web app, which is Robvis, and is even easier, yeah? You don't even have to do all this R stuff. You can just download the plot, and then it's done. You know, it's quite simple. Okay, now I'm going to go to the whole group for last minute questions. Uh, last minute questions. All right, guys, we'll be finishing soon, but let's just ask them. Salongo, Nurane, Harjit, Hamza, any questions? Oh, all good. Rami, Anissa, Madi, Jobran. Madi, okay. did, did you manage to? Uh, I know we, we're quite deep in, but did you manage to uh, create a posit account? Madi? Uh, Jobran, Bunayat, Mohammed Barakat, Celestin, any questions, any issues so far? No questions, Doctor. Thank you. No, all Faith. is good. All is good. Thank you. Faith, Sola, Kiara, Clement, any issues? Yeah, I'm, I'm, now, I'm now installing, but my question is, please, can we get some of those um, Excel files to work with after the class? Well, they're all on the um, this book, Meta-Analysis in R. To be honest, okay, they're, in, in, they, they're in the DMATAR package. So okay, that's chapter two. Yeah, yeah, they're all in there. Yeah, so Murchku, Halima, Nicole, Dalida, any questions, any issues so far? Vihan, Felipe, Musa, Ali Khalil, any issues? Uh, Rispa, Manur, Rania, Christelle, Zaina. Vishwa, Giva, Hadi, Basil, and Shika. Laura, any issues? Guys? No, no it's not really helpful. Very good. Very I, good I just want to have a question. Oh, sorry. Very good. Uh, sorry. Yeah, any, uh, any questions? questions? Yeah, that is not fully related to what we covered today, but it's more about, I heard about after doing this course, would be a, an opportunity to undertake a meta-analysis systematic review with a team. And I was wondering if there was a bit more information about that. I think it's going to be with um, Niraj is, uh, is uh, at the NMRA basically is organizing some stuff. So you can link up with them. Uh, also okay. the idea behind this course is that we basically teach you how to do the whole thing yourself. <laughs> the idea is that you're able to do the entire meta-analysis without that much help and you organize your own yeah. team and all that okay but yes you can contact oh. the nmra um amy safa blessing bharat najib uh adrija oh everything is good everything is good okay fine so i think what you guys can do if you guys want is search uh my name and then you can find a few of my meta-analysis um we just had one in jack imaging as well uh which was pretty nice it's on amyloid but i think they all sort of follow the same uh structure and i'll just show that paper one last time before we stop um share screen entire screen and then uh, you guys can see the paper one last time so this is is, is it's a, a quick a short abstract intro um three paragraphs four paragraphs um, about the disease, about the intervention, about the background of the previous meta-analysis, et cetera, or trials that are taking place in this area, the methods, which is the search, the inclusion criteria, the exclusion criteria, Prisma chart, which is about papers included, excluded, what tool used, which was risk of bias here, how the data was extracted, how the data was analyzed. In your case, it was R. So you just talk about the summary measures that you used and the heterogeneity, and then the results of the studies themselves. And in this case, you can see um, each of the studies, what sort of study was, was a randomized control trial, um, what was the comparison, how many people in there, and in, in uh, the demographics, male, female, things like that. And then the recurrence, 
uh, sorry, th this is the uh, forest plots. In the forest plots, you, sh you should not have more than seven. Yeah, seven is sort of the limit of the number of forest plots and all these comparisons. As you can see, just as a bit of uh, results about you know commenting on each one, uh, this showed significant was significant, and then there was a little bit of heterogeneity, etc. For example, is written, and then all of this, and then complications. All of these on, on, on the forest plots, there's a few uh, bits of text, and then finally. Uh, we talk about a uh, risk of bias and we say, well, you know, the risk of bias was fine, but some studies, the random sequence generation allocation consumer was not clearly defined. Yeah, and this is the, the risk of bias. And then the final plot, you didn't, he didn't have to do a final plot, but, you know, he, this is quite easy to generate as well. And then a bit of discussion. A discussion is not results. In discussion, what you do is you talk about, again, um, previous meta-analysis, you talk about um, how this affects guidelines, or and uh, you talk about um, how a future trial could be designed, and you could talk about how the results uh, work from a pathophysiology level. Oh, this is why this happened. This is why this is working. This is why it's not working. Yeah, and limitations. This is the last section. Limitations. Okay. All right. Uh, any uh, last minute questions, guys? Speak now or forever be silent. No, the silence is deafening. Let me let me torture somebody. Uh, Vishwa, Mahnoor, Nicole, Faith, Anisa, any questions? No, sir. Okay, fine. All right, I think we're going to stop here now. I think there is a feedback form as well. Um, and let me...